Hello everyone. So today um, I've come to Bempton Cliffs um, on the Yorkshire coast for my annual trip. Uh, usually I come with my wife Amy, uh, but uh, she thought she'd give it a miss this year. So I'm here, I set off at four o'clock this morning. Uh, it's now just gone six, so it's took me a little over two hours. Um, with a stop for a McDonald's breakfast, don't tell Amy. Um, but yeah, um, hoping today, well, almost guaranteed, I guess, to see Janet, Puffin, uh, Gillimart, Razorbill, Kitty Wake, um, and Tree Sparrow, which are already flitting about the car park. So I'm going to try and get some photos of those to begin with. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's going to be a good day. I'm uh, just walking down the uh, um, meadow bit of the part of the reserve and there's loads of uh, kitty wake in the field and as I'm walking along the field margin I realise that uh, a lot of them have got nesting material in the in the beaks so uh, try and get a bit of footage of that, that was really cool um, but yeah so far it's uh, great weather a little bit breezy but the sunshine soon warms me up so yeah, should be a good day. One of my uh, favourite uh, birds to come and see here at Bempton, the Kitty Wake, characterised by the uh, ink dipped uh, wing tips um, and they're the smallest gull and live mostly out at sea. Um, yeah, really characteristic. Um, I love the call um, and they make for some fantastic photos. So. Yeah, I'll uh, try and get a few more of those throughout the day. But so far, good stuff. So, fun fact for you. Um, I've been planning a video, filming a video, for the past um, almost two weeks now. Uh, trying to get a barn owl. Um, I know where one is back home. Um, but it's right near the nest box. And with it being a Schedule 1 bird, I can't, can't and won't film there uh, for fear of disturbing. Um, so I tried to sit around the nest box at a distance to see which direction it headed in when it came out um, and wasn't really successful in finding anywhere decent to, fight, to go and search for where it, where it hunts. Um, but so I moved on, uh, tried to find a different location, found an owl but didn't get any footage and then went back two nights after that and it didn't show back up. Um, I'm here at Bempton today, you can see the sea in the background and there's a barn owl quartering over the meadow on the right hand side of me. Um, got some lovely, um, bit of, a lovely bit of footage and Hopefully some nice photos when I get them back on the laptop later. So uh, I'll put those up now if they're any good. Typical.
So, um, again, in the barn owl, um, on the way here, uh, just as the sun was coming up, uh, I spotted a barn owl coming towards me over the road. Um, I was so tempted to stop and get out of the car. Um, but in the back of my mind, I had that by the time that I had got out of the car, set up the camera, it would have been too far away for anything decent. Um, the light was amazing, but and it, and it would have made it would have made some amazing footage for on the way here. But uh, uh, it was also kind of on a on a bad bend um, as well, so nowhere really to park up. There was a lay by a little bit ahead, but. If I'd have got in there and got out, by the time that I'd even got out of the car, it would have been gone. Um, I've uh, been mulling it over in my head the entire way, rest of the way here, um, thinking, oh, I wish I'd have got out. Um, but uh, clearly, nature is on my side today. Um, I also spotted my first stone shot of the year, um, Movin said barn owl uh, here so yeah going well uh, barn owl's back out now he's coming towards me so I'm gonna try and get a little bit more footage To the untrained eye, coming here for the first time, might uh, they might be amazed at the amount of birds. Um, but with the avian flu uh, ripping through the seabird colonies of the UK and the world, um, to take it from someone who comes here at least once a year, this place is silent. It's really sad. You can probably see the uh, cliff behind me. There's not a single bird on there, which is really, really sad. Um, you can see, you look out to sea, and there's just hardly anything flying about uh, compared to what it was even last year. And last year was in the midst of avian flu. Um, it's really sad to see. Uh, but I just there's nothing we can really do at this present moment. Um, hopefully, someone has a breakthrough soon, or someone, or, or it just dies out a little bit. But um, I'm I'm just stood on Staple Nuke, um, or the, the the platform before that one, and. Um, the famous arch, as you can probably see, it's a bit far away, but um, it was a mass with white, usually, um, and there's nothing at all there now, really. Um, there's probably 50 to 100 birds on it. There's usually, you'd probably, they probably squeeze about 500 birds on there. Um, yeah, just so sad to see. But, I'll enjoy the day nonetheless, it's just a little bit of a shame to see it so such a wonderful place, so quiet. So, uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of time, a little bit of time there, uh, trying to get the gannets, get some film, some photos of them. Um, usually it's the puffins that people come for here, but uh, I always find myself drawn to the gannets. They're a bigger subject, they're easier to photograph. Um, but uh, they've got so many characteristics and it looks, uh, each one looks different. Um, I think it's seven years before they're fully mature uh, and until then they have like black, black and white piano keys on the uh, backs of their wings, which is really interesting to look at and spot how old each one is.
uh, people have been picking up on uh, during the avian flu is uh, they've, they've been noticing that the survivors, especially the gannets, um, are showing signs of having the disease, having the illness, and then surviving. Uh, gannets in particular are spotting a black eye, um, where usually it's a blue, um, blue pupil. Uh, it's quite a drastic change. Uh, it's yet to be understood how it might affect the uh, gannets' eyesight, um, but uh, it's good to know that some birds are surviving. Nice photos of the former there, um, a little bit of footage too. Um, underrated bird in my opinion, they've got some fantastic plumage um, and just they make for amazing uh, bird in flight shots. Um, the puffin is proving quite elusive, I've spotted them, got a photo a record shot only really um, but uh, not really showing well yet um, I'm heading north now up to the um, northern side of the reserve so, um, so hopefully I'll get uh, better or better views of them there um, yeah it's been a good day so far um, the, lit the littler birds, I've said about the gannets on Staple Nook, it's usually a sea of wires and you can't even see the rock. But the more you look, the more the little birds, the razor bills, the guillemots and the puffins are missing as well. So it's clear that it's not just affected the gannets, uh, it's affected all of them. Sorry, sorry about the wind here. Um, yeah, it's affected all of them. Hopefully they can bounce back. Uh, there's certainly the space to, to whether there remains the food to. Um, but hopefully the government's doing something about that to uh, take the pressure off the sandy old population, get the seabird colonies back to the number to the numbers that they should be at. A little bit about the formers uh, while I sit and have a cup of tea. Um, one of the reasons why I like them so much is the, um, the plumage, it's just really detailed. Um, when they're in flight, they kind of look like fighter jets as well. Um, really, really entertaining to try and capture in flight. Um, uh, what's also interesting is they, they've got a, you, quite, quite a unique defence mechanism in that they um, can spit a really sticky fluid from the stomachs to ward off any predators, uh, be that a chick spitting it or uh, an adult. Um, so yeah, unlike gulls where they just make a load of racket, they've got uh, a really unpleasant defence mechanism. Uh, another fact about the fulmer is they're quite susceptible to uh, microplastics. In fact, 51% of fulmers on the North Sea have been found to have more than 0.1 of a gram of microplastics in their stomach. Um, doesn't sound like much, but uh, I'd rather not have that in my stomach than uh, nice fresh fish. And it has been found that uh, some formers have that much microplastics in their stomach that they end up um, dying of starvation because there's just no room for actual food in there. Uh, microplastics, when they tend, when they start to uh, corrode down, um, 
do give off sort of a, a fishy smell. So uh, it's understandable why the formers are going for that uh, plastic. Um, you just see it as an easy meal, but it's not digestible. Uh, and has a detrimental effect on, on the uh, food population. But uh, hopefully more things are being done in the future to try and stop the uh, microplastic pollution. Um, I know I've stopped using uh, washing, washing tablets and started using powder instead. There's no microplastics in stuff, little things like that. As, as long as it's done by enough people, it can make a difference. So, I thought I'd pick a quiet spot uh, to say um, this is it from me today. Uh, it's getting way too busy. Um, my camera is officially dead. I need another battery. I've only got the one. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a fantastic morning. Um, even I can even see the overflow car park starting to fill up now. So, uh, with it being bank holiday weekend, I thought I'd uh, come out extra early. Uh, it looks like it's paid off, but uh, I've enjoyed my morning. Um, quite a bit to see, not as much as I would have liked. Uh, there should be a, a ton more birds on the cliffs, but uh, I'm sure they'll get back to the numbers. Um, but now I'm going to head home and start editing the photos and the film that I've got. Um, so. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed it, why not share it with a friend or family member? Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully I'll be able to bring you the barn owl soon, the barn owl video soon. Uh, just, it needs to start behaving a little bit more. So we'll see, bye.